We're going to kick off this show today, and we're going to talk about the monetization of 5G networks and some news out of Amdocs um, that you're going to tell us about, Ron. Right on. Yeah. First of all, orange. And I'm not emphasizing orange because I'm wearing an orange polo shirt. Yes, you are. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the French uh, operator uh, included Amdocs in what it's dubbing its experimental uh, 5G standalone network. Yeah. And that's a really an important aspect here is that many of the 5G deployments, as we all understand and know, are what are called 5G non-standalone implementations. Right. That is combining 4G capabilities uh, with the uh, new 5G capabilities, particularly uh, the 4G core. And as a result, it's really a blending of uh, two uh, network uh, architectures. Mm -hmm. And really what the operators are striving for is you know, the 5G standalone implementation, pure uh, 5G, if you will. And so uh, that's really would be um, a, a tremendous breakthrough when those become mainstream, because those are the cloud native software uh, driven uh, AI powered uh, networks uh, that the operators require in right. order to do things like use case as a service, uh, to deliver something like a, a virtual reality session on demand, et cetera. You know, all the uh, really cool things we've been talking about for a while. And it's, you know, it's been a little time coming in terms of having you know, breakout applications with some of the early uh, 5G deployments. And this is really going to be that event horizon. You know, once the operators master 5G standalone, uh, that will make a difference. And I think uh, Orange made a shrewd marketing move by calling it an experimental uh, network because it is a fundamentally a two-year project, uh, first right. of all. And uh, they're looking to have hundreds of users on this particular network uh, by the end of this year. Right. So I think it'll be very incumbent on them to come out with you know, some use cases, lessons learned that can really make a difference in terms of, you know, driving 5G forward, certainly within their network, but certainly in terms of pan-European capabilities, you know, Absolutely. keeping pace with what's happening in North America and uh, China and Northeast Asia, et cetera. And I think a little foregrounding is helpful here because at Mobile World Congress 2021, Orange uh, came out with uh, their experimental 5G standalone network uh, proposition and included uh, a variety of uh, high profile uh, vendors right out of the uh, gate. And that right. included uh, Mavenir, HPE, uh, Dell, uh, Case Systems, and uh, Xiaomi. And now with Ambox on board, this is actually really an important aspect here. It's like, yes, you know, we really need all of the fundamental technology interworking, right. you know, the 5G core, certainly the open RAN capabilities, which are integral to any you know, 5G standalone implementation, but also making money off of it. And this is Absolutely. where Ambox steps in. And this yeah. is, you know, their uh, BSS uh, portfolio. That's supporting uh, these capabilities across, you know, a variety of uh, traditional BSS functions and uh, domains. And uh, this is a feather in a cap for Amdocs because it's demonstrating. Obviously, they have, you know, multi-vendor uh, bona fides, right. but also that uh, their uh, systems are ready for prime time uh, 5G capabilities. Uh, yeah. The ability to leverage, uh, first of all, AI inputs, which are going to be essential for automation. The only way Orange or any other operator is going to be uh, able to deliver uh, use case as a service on a mass scalable level is through automation. And that requires an AI engine. And it also requires uh, a billing system that can you know, monetize uh, all these new capabilities in uh, a rapid, agile, you know, flexible fashion. Right. And so uh, this is uh, really uh, helpful for you know, understanding how this can come together because, you know, we're seeing, you know, for example, Rakuten in Japan inching along. Uh, we're seeing Dish trying to come together with a uh, purpose-built cloud-native 5G network, and that will eventually, you know, reach a production phase. But again, uh, there is this element of patience that is required to really see these things come together and have breakthroughs. And I think Orange mm -hmm. is setting a pretty good example, uh, pretty good uh, realistic timetable expectations. And so uh, this is, you know, uh, they're showing us here are milestones to measure the progress in this regard, and Ambax yeah. is going to have a, a major hand in this. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, one other point is the MDoc solution runs on Amazon Web Service, and that will be integrated into Orange's multi-vendor 5G networks in a hybrid cloud approach. Of course, you know, that makes sense. Um, but, you know, one point that you made here, Ron, that I think is tremendously interesting is that, um, you know, they intend to have, Orange intends to have hundreds of users by the end of the year. It's September. You know, I mean, that's by the end of the year is quick. So it will be very interesting to watch this as it rolls out and and, you know, what kind of user adoption we see. And, um, you know, they are they are not wasting any time on this. So it's exciting. Oh, an excellent point, Shelley. Yes, that the Andox uh, solution is available through AWS. Uh, so this is, again, emphasizing the cloud native aspect here. And, uh, I think Andox, I just said that. I think I just said that, Ron. <laughs> yes, you did. And I'm saying that's an important point uh, yeah. because, uh, well, first of all, Andox uh, has selected AWS as their preferred right. cloud partner. So that's right. important. But I think what's also going to be important for Orange is after working with AWS, I think they will ultimately need to work with multi-cloud partners. Absolutely. You know, for example, Azure is proving itself with AT&T. I think it's an inevitability because, you know, again, the operators are, you know, concerned about, you know, the age old uh, issue of uh, vendor lock and Absolutely. they don't want to be, you know, captive to one cloud provider's As you know, they should pricing be. policies. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, excellent point and uh, definitely uh, worth uh, expounding. On.